Great. So today we're going to be talking about how to do vascular os longitudinal and cross-sectional measures on the ultrasound device. Uh, if you guys uh, take a look back here, you can see this cord, make sure it's plugged in over here, the extension cord which plugs into the wall behind there. Uh, first thing to do, turn on the ultrasound, hit that power button. Make sure that you guys, so this screen typically will be in a locked position here. The screen typically is in a locked position. Make sure that when you want to open the screen, you got to make sure that you twist this this direction and then you're going to slowly pick up the screen and tilt it forward position you want in for recording. The main probe that we're going to be using for analysis, ML6-15, this is the one that we use for musculoskeletal analysis. Some of these other probes on here, you can see this is a, a probe that we can look at deep tissue, so if we wanted to look at deeper muscles that could be useful, or uh, organs for example, could also be useful. This is our cardiac probe, uh, which we can go over how to use in the different video. Um, but for superficial tissue, such as vascular alice, gastroc, this is a good program to use. So when you first uh, see the screen here, uh, you notice that the setting here, this is set for the cardiac probe. So we're going to have to go ahead and change the probe setting. So here's a probe uh, change button. You go over here, see it's set on the cardiac probe. We want the ML615. So we're going to click on that. Point to the screen like when you click on things because I can't see the mouse or the mouse is oh. on the screen. Okay, gotcha. And another thing that we want to uh, do is, so now that we have ML615, we want to click on this right here. Small parts is what that's abbreviated. So you click on that with the mouse. That makes sure that our settings are set for musculoskeletal. So we go over here, you see musculoskeletal preset, and that's going to allow us to do things like measure pinnation angle and muscle thickness and things of that nature. So uh, when we have a subject here, so Nick, go ahead if you can lay down on the table. Your head's going to be on this side, you're going to be laying on your left side. Have the subject lay down, have them lay on their left side. You can put their head up on the pillow there. <clears throat> so typically the subject will be in spandex. Uh, you want to make sure that you're able to uh, palpate for their greater canter. So right now we're just measuring femur length. So typically palpate for greater canter here. Put a mark there. Uh, and then you'll also want to palpate for lateral recondyle. So make sure you guys mark that off as well. And then what you're going to do with the tape measure is you're going to measure that distance from the greater trochanter to the lateral to the femur. And what we're going to do, uh, our standard uh, mark is going to be half that distance. So this is 38 centimeters. We're going to put it halfway, so right at 19. So make sure you have somebody recording for you or write it down yourself. 38 centimeters is, is femur length. And so this would be our standard mark that we would use. Uh, which has been used in, in uh, multiple studies. Uh, and the uh, modified uh, site would be five centimeters medial to that mark. Uh, this was used in well study and something that I've used in our studies as well. Uh, I, th I think for subjects it gives, uh, it's a little bit more comfortable position for them to be laying like this. Uh, for the standard VL mark, usually the subject will be laying supine. Uh, so they'll be laying on their back and then you also will, you'll use this half femur length mark. For the five centimeter mark, uh, there's a slightly different setup. Uh, so for this one, uh, because their knees are slightly bent, uh, I prefer again this one because I think it gives, so the VL at that particular side is a little bit uh, thicker and uh, I think it gives a be better representation of VL muscle thickness. So what you also want to do is, is make sure their knee angle is the same each time since they're going to be in this position. 
Um, you can either have them do it with a fully extended position. What's important is that you're consistent each time. Uh, I like keeping their knees slightly bent to make sure that they're not contracting their VO. Um, so the main thing is that whatever knee angle you choose, uh, make sure you do it the same way each time uh, for each subject. Uh, typically, I've been using 120 degree knee angle. So for this, uh, you'll want to make sure that, again, you pop a for lateral, lateral malleolus, great trochanter, and you put the fulcrum there uh, right at uh, lateral pecondyle. So make sure you have it set up. So put them right at 120 degrees. After you've set their knee angle, now you're ready to start doing some measurements with the probe. So, uh, first thing you want to do in order to set the patient up, so here there's a button. You see patient, click on patient button. It'll come over here. If you're a new patient, you can click on new patient here. And we put in their last name. You want to fill all this information. So you have, have a patient ID that you come up with, uh, their last name, first name, their date of birth, sex, and that's really all you need to fill out for that. Uh, because uh, he's been here before, we can go ahead and type in his last name. And you'll notice that his patient ID comes up here. So you double click on that with the set button here. So make sure you double click on the set button. That's going to be your enter button here. Uh, so next thing we'll do is see we have all the different previous exams here. We'll want to select new exam. And so we can double click on this new exam here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm simply going to uh, record a new image. I can actually, if I wanted to, pull up images from these previous exams by going to image history and compare them to the current exam. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But first, let's just go over how to conduct a, how to just do a measurement. Uh, assuming this would be his first exam. So there's different settings on here that you can adjust. Uh, the frequency, uh, focus position are the main ones that you may adjust. So if, if you double click on this here, it changes uh, which setting you adjust. So you notice you can switch back and, and forth between frequency and visual cortex. By, double, by pressing in on this button. So frequency, we usually keep the same. Uh, usually keep it at 12 <coughs> megahertz. And some of these other uh, settings, I don't really mess with. The only other one that I, I'll change will be this focus position here, as you can see. You can adjust the focus position and we'll see how that affects the image. And then the focus number as well. So if you want to focus on multiple different locations, Notice there's different ranges here. We can set that as well, but typically I just keep that, there's one range on there. <clears throat> so now that you have the screen ready, we're ready to capture an image. Go ahead and apply some gel to the top of the probe. You can be generous with this gel. All right, so typically you'll notice on the ultrasound probe, there's a mark there. Uh, for and that will give us a get indication of how to orient the probe when placed on the VL site. So notice, I grab it with uh, typically my index and middle finger and then thumb on the other side, and this part will be facing towards his knee. Make sure that when you place the probe on the skin, you're going to want to be able to adjust the amount of pressure you apply to the site. And typically, I'll use my uh, ring and, and pinky to make sure that I'm not pushing the probe against the skin. So, uh, let me go ahead and change this. So notice the only thing that should be touching the skin really is the gel. The probe uh, is going to be just resting on top of the gel. The gel should be really, you should barely be making contact with the skin uh, because you don't want to press it. So if you notice here on the image, uh, typically this is easier to do with two people, so I recommend if you're trying to get good ultrasound images to use a second person to help you click buttons over here on the screen. 
because uh, it's difficult to do yourself if you've never done it before. So typically, I'll have someone press the buttons for me. Uh, so notice here, if we go back to our different uh, adjustments we can make. So here is the uh, focus position. Notice how I can, I can adjust that, and it will change where you see the image, how the clarity in the image. So notice as we move it further up, we get a very a, you know, more clear image, uh, superficial VL. And then as we move it down, we can get a more clear image in the deep portion of the VL. So here you have out of pose. This is going to be uh, superficial connective tissue, deep connective tissue. Here you see your fascicles running through the air, and uh, we can also use those to measure the fascicle angle and muscle thickness. This muscle here, deep to it, well, is going to be our vastus intermedius. And you see there's another knob here, it's called depth. We can change the depth of the image by adjusting this. You can see intermediates there, and deep to that would be the bone. Uh, this will be important, especially if a person has a good amount of adipose. It's going to be difficult uh, to get all of VL in that standard uh, depth, so we need to adjust the depth to be able to get a good picture of the VL. So notice, uh, here's just to show you an example of what happens when you press the probe down. So here's what happens if I press down on the skin with the probe. As you can see, it drastically changes the orientation and it's gonna change your muscle thickness measurements. So again, that's just slight changes in the amount of pressure I apply, changes the thickness. So that's why you wanna make sure to again use those pinky index fingers to help you. So I press down on the skin over here, so that way I can just, just lightly uh, keep the probe over his skin without compressing. So you still get a fairly clear image. So typically what you want to do next is you want to make sure you get as clear image as possible for analysis. So it's very important that you get a good uh, picture of the fascicles running across, a uh, very clear picture. If, another thing that's important, so if you want to adjust the lighting in the image, there's a gain button here. Notice you can scroll that to the right. You can adjust the brightness of the image. Um, so you can adjust that as well. So in this, at this point, we have a decent image. We're gonna go ahead and freeze that image. So there's a freeze button here. And then to save that image to the person's new file, you're gonna click P1. If we wanted to print an image, we can click on P2 and that will print an image for us to give to the subject. So that's gonna, uh, typically we'll take three measurements at each site. So you'll go ahead, if you want to take another measurement, you hit unfreeze. And we're going to go ahead and make sure we get that probe in a similar location. And then we'll hit freeze, P1, unfreeze. So you just click that freeze button again to unfreeze. Freeze, P1, unfreeze. And there we have three images from that particular site. Um, so this can be done, of course, in multiple different sites along the VL. Uh, we've also done you know, uh, three quarters femur length as well as half femur length, and uh, looked at thickness and cross-sectional area there as well. Uh, for this next measurement, so this is, uh, these are the longitudinal uh, collection measurements. Uh, we'll talk about analysis after we finish collecting all the images. Uh, so we just finished our, our longitudinal images, now we're going to move on to cross-sectional. So before we go over how to record cross-sectional area measurements, I wanted to also show you guys how to pull up two images side by side, so two longitudinal images. This will be important for when you're trying to compare a current image to a previous image that you've collected from a particular subject. It's really, it's very important, especially if you're gonna look at changes over time, that you choose a uh, site that's the same exact location. So even if you measure off femur length and you, you know, accurately uh, you know, place the mark there on the spot that you placed it last time, or at least close to it, uh, you'll need to pull up the ultrasound image as well, so that way you can uh, make sure that the orientation of the probe uh, and the uh, image itself, or the, uh, how the fascicles are arranged on the screen, are similar between the two images. So, uh, first thing we're going to do, so we actually we just finished collecting those images. We're going to click on Patient button here in the top corner. And so notice we're still on our current exam here, so we're still on our current exam. We're going to go to Image History. 
This is going to pull up all the images from this patient. Uh, so there's a lot of them. And to make it easier, actually, let's go ahead and start a new exam. Uh, so Because that, that way I know that the images are on the same location uh, as the, what I just did. So to end the exam, which is what we're going to have to do now, just hit end exam button here. You can put end current patient hit store all, stores the images that we just collected. I can go back and put in his name again. Pull up his file, I'm gonna create another exam just for an example here. Uh, and then I'm gonna, I have that exam, so that's the exam that I'm currently on. I can double click on it. I'm gonna go to image history. And so now I have the images that I just collected and then a current exam. So. This would say be you know from you know the beginning of the training program and say now we're looking at uh, post. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on previous image, double click on a previous image from that uh, first exam we did. So this would be our say pre-training measurement. And what I'm going to do now is notice there's buttons here that I can select. I'm going to select uh, L. That's going to shift this image to the left there. If I hit L again, it'll shift it back to that normal position. So I'm going to hit L, and then I'm going to hit R, and that's going to change the screen over here. I'm going to hit this unfreeze or freeze button, and that's going to allow me to view a current image. So notice, I'll go ahead and adjust the pro. I can change the depth if I need to, I can change the clarity of the image, the brightness, and the focus position. You can do all the same things in this, in this uh, split screen setting as well, as you did in the other screen. So we we'll want to make sure that we place the probe in the same location. Some of the things you'll want to look for, uh, so you'll want to look for uh, distinct fascicles, uh, adipose, uh, even intermediates, looking at how muscle looks compared to the previous image. Um, all those things are going to be important when you're deciding on you know, whether or not you've placed the probe in a similar location. Uh, one of the things that you can see is distinct in this image here. You can see this fascicle down here, this part of the connective tissue is very similar to this portion here in the previous image. So notice that portion and this fascicle here, uh, this portion of the connective tissue are fairly similar. So I know that I've placed the probe in a similar location. Uh, so now that we know we have the probe in a similar location, uh, so at this point, so I'm going to hit unfreeze again, try to get back to that image that I just had. Now what you'll do to pull up this uh, current image and take recordings, all you have to do is press R, so it's on the right screen there, and now we're ready to freeze and save images on this new exam. So that's how you pull up a, a previous exam. Uh, with the current exam. Now we'll move on to how to uh, collect cross-sectional images. We'll need to make sure that we change the setting now. So there's a yellow button over here. Uh, this is going to be our logic view button. So this will allow us to collect panoramic images of Vastelar House. So go ahead and click that button. So we're also going to make sure that we have the probe uh, gel spread out. Uh, pretty well here over this area. Uh, a better way of doing this would be to have uh, some type of ruler or uh, something to make sure that we keep the probe in the same plane of motion while we're collecting the panoramic image. Right now I'm just going to do it by hand. Um, but there are other ways that previous researchers have, have done this to make sure that the probe stays in the same plane of motion as they collect the panoramic image. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, so this is going to be our, a cross-sectional view. This here is uh, rectus femoris here. You can see on the right, this is going to be vastus lateralis. Again, here's our superficial deep aponeurosis, and this is going to be the border here of vastus lateralis. So you want to make sure that you have a pretty clear image of that border, because that's going to be extremely important when we go to the analysis. So at this point, uh, we're going to need to start collecting an image. 
Again, similar to what we did before, uh, typically I'll keep my uh, index and pinky, so sorry, ring finger and pinky on the skin to make sure I'm not putting, pushing too hard against the skin. Uh, at this point, I want to make sure we have a clear image before we start collecting. In order to start recording the image here, we're going to hit L. So L is going to begin our panoramic. Uh, notice that was a little bit blurry start, so we we'll probably want to do that one again. Go very slowly. You don't want to go too quickly because you want to capture a clear image. So very slowly moving across the skin. Keeping in that same plane of motion. until we can start to begin to see the end of that Bacillauralis. And some uh, subject, this is more clear than others, and it depends on how you're orienting the probe at that point in time. Uh, but it's right here, you can barely see it. Uh, as we, this, this is where we start to switch from Bacillauralis to our hamstring group here, but it's going to be right in there. And sometimes that part of the image is, is difficult to get a clear, uh, clear picture. Notice the beginning is still over here. So this is still good enough for an analysis we can still see where it begins. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit trickier when we go into the analysis to get a clear, uh, a clear trace of the muscle in that particular location. So we're gonna do it another time. Uh, make sure you hit P1, so save it, and then hit unfreeze. We're gonna go back to our first screen here. So, again, we're ready to begin your image, so hit L. No, no, uh, normally I'll pause here for a few seconds just so that I make sure I get a clear picture that was a little bit better of where the VL starts. So if you hold the probe there for a couple seconds, it'll make sure that you capture a clear image of that starting point. Again, make sure you move fairly slowly to capture a clear panoramic image. So notice we're getting close to the end there. So a little bit better picture. We can see you have a, you have a little bit better image to analyze afterwards, but still it's difficult uh, to get a clear image in that particular area uh, for every subject for every image. Uh, so you want to make sure that as best you can, you get a clear outline of VL, and that's going to help when we're doing our analysis. <laughs> so go ahead and save that image. And typically we'll do a, a third one as well, uh, but since our, you guys should be familiar now with uh, how to collect the image, we'll move on to analyzing these images. Now we're going to move on to our analysis portion. Make sure you guys clean off the probe. These are right underneath here. You're going to have to clean off the probe each time after you finish using it. Make sure not to use paper towels. Use these to wipe off each of uh, wipe the gel off the probe. Uh, make sure you, you can use the paper towels to wipe off the subject. Don't use these to wipe off the subject. Great. So now I'm going to move on to our analysis portion. So again, we can go back and select and find our patient here, put in his last name, and be able to pull him up. So we're going to double click on the exam we want to analyze. And then we have the images here. I'm going to double click on the images. So for our longitudinal analysis, longitudinal image. There's a measure button here. Go ahead and select the measure button. Notice that length is going to pop up. Um, you'll want to make sure that the point that you select from the superficial aponeurosis, that you select that point each time. So every time you uh, analyze the image. Uh, and you'll also want to make sure that it's best typically to uh, select a point that uh, you know uh, that's fairly, uh, in this case, close to the uh, muscle itself. So at this more interior border of the aponeurosis, the same is true when we select the border of the deep aponeurosis. We'll select a point that's uh, again on the border there. So uh, to be consistent each time in each image, you want to find a fascicle. For example, they're able to look at each time and uh, 
use as a reference for where you're gonna place this mark, and then also using the aperosis to determine where you're gonna place the beginning of, of the measurement as well. Um, so this fascicle is fairly uh, clear here. I can get a decent fination angle from that one, uh, as well as this one here. Uh, so note, just make sure that you select the similar fascicle each time. So we'll go ahead, in order to start uh, analyzing, go ahead and hit set, so that's our enter button. And we're gonna scroll down, and as best as possible, again, keeping the uh, 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 line that you create, try and make sure that it's perpendicular with the aponeurosis there. It's not gonna be perfect, but uh, try to get as perpendicular as possible. Uh, these should be, when you're collecting the image, those you'll ideally want to have parallel with each other uh, to get a, uh, an accurate mus uh, muscle thickness measurement. Uh, another way of doing this, if these were uh, not parallel, say they start, it started to converge slightly, you can always take measurements you know, at three different locations. And again, the main thing is, is that if you collect you know, the image at that particular site, that you use that site each time for doing a longitudinal analysis. Uh, ideally, these two uh, uh, aperosis would be parallel. So we'll go ahead and hit the enter button again, and that will allow us to determine our, our muscle thickness. Um, so if we want to do pination angle, we can actually do it right here on the same image. We're gonna hit the measure button again. I'm gonna scroll over here to pination angle, hit the enter button, and I'm gonna scroll back over here. Uh, if you want to look at this fascicle, again, try, you know, we're going to use the same fascicle in each image. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that when you do this, you stay, uh, so I'm going to hit enter, and then you want to make sure that you stay along this aponeurosis. And we're going to set it about there. And that's giving us a decent indication of the pination angle. So what I can do is I'll hit clear. There's another button here if I want to reset it. So I want to adjust the angle slightly so I can get a little bit better. Uh, so I can line it up a little bit better with the fascicle. So here we go. It's lined up a little bit better there with the fascicle. This isn't the clearest image, so it's difficult to get it lined up perfectly. And then also it's important to note that as you can see, the fascicles bend slightly. Uh, so this is uh, you know, a rough estimate of the pination angle because there's curvature in the fascicles. Uh, that's not taking consideration with this you know, simple uh, function. So go ahead and hit enter, and then you'll have your pination angle and your fascicle length here. I'm sorry, your uh, muscle thickness. Fascicle length, we can actually uh, calculate in Excel, or if you have a whole fascicle on the screen. Uh, some authors have uh, interpolated the uh, when they're uh, you know, uh, measuring the fascicle length. They'll do the same thing we did with muscle thickness, for example. And so I'll go ahead and do that uh, just to show you guys what some other researchers have done. So typically, they'll follow the fascicle all the way. Uh, in this case, we're not able to reach it, but they'll usually. Um, have the, uh, this uh, line here drawn all the way up to the top of the aponeurosis, and then that will be used to uh, approximate the fascicle length. Um, that's one way of doing it, but again, the problem is that it's not taking consideration the curvature of the fascicle, so you still run into the same problem. You can also calculate fascicle length in Excel uh, simply by using the trig function. Uh, you know, Abe reports in the studies is muscle thickness multiplied by the sine of the pination angle, you can do that in Excel pretty easily. Uh, is another way of, uh, that office would use to calculate fascicle length. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and save this uh, current image. So make sure you hit P1 again, and that will save your analyzed image. <coughs> next, you'll move on and select your next image. So that one's definitely not as clear as, as the first one uh, as far as the location goes. Um, see, you can clearly tell that this image is different than this one uh, as far as where it's, uh, the probe was placed. I picked the probe up and moved it. So again, this is, this is a good illustration. So these two images, I had that probe in the same spot. Uh, this first image, I had picked the probe up uh, or I had moved it to the same location. 
So here you can see why it's important to make sure you keep that probe in the same spot. Uh, typically when I'm saving images, I won't move that probe at all. I'll just say freeze, P1, unfreeze, and keep that probe in the same spot. So that's why it's important to have somebody else helping you collect the images. Because when you're having to adjust the probe and press buttons at the same time, you, it'll clearly change the clarity of the image and, and where the probe is positioned. You'll move your hand around, you won't even realize it. So ideally, you're just focusing on where you're putting the probe and how steady you're holding your hand, how much pressure you're applying, and you're just telling the person ne next to you who's pressing buttons for you the commands. Uh, so that way you get some good images for analysis. Uh, we'll go to the cross-sectional images. Here you can see you know, we got two there. The second one's a little bit better. Uh, typically, we'll be able to zoom in on this as well. So there's a zoom button here. So it's not letting us zoom in on this particular image. Typically, you'll be able to zoom in on the image if you adjust this function here. So it's not letting us right now for some reason. I have to go back and double check why. But if you're doing the cross-sectional area, you want to zoom in a little bit so you can uh, cut out this portion of the image and it'll allow this to be enlarged some. And it makes it a little bit easier to trace uh, using the uh, function that's built in. So notice uh, to get the cross-sectional area you just double click on the measure button so if I hit this twice you'll see area and circumference there. Um, so for this one it's really important and difficult uh, to do on uh, this device because of this uh, toggle button here. So you'll want to hit set and that will begin. Usually I'll start at this portion of the image uh, because it's the most difficult as you can see, we don't even have, it's not very clear, this particular portion of the border. Um, ideally, again, you'd collect, I, I would have collected a few extra images until I was able to get this portion a little bit more clear. Um, but this, for now, is what we'll do. Uh, we're just going to trace this outside border here. And you'll have to make sure that you go fairly slowly because it's difficult to stay right on, or right above actually, that aponeurosis. Um, there's other ways of doing this, which I'll explain in a second, but if you're gonna do it this way, if you wanna do it in the ultrasound device itself, this is the way you have to do it. You have to slowly trace around the border. I'm just gonna speed up a little bit. So you can back trace as well, if you mess up. So you wanna slowly trace around the border making sure that you're not getting any adipose or another muscle or anything like that. So this is fairly good uh, uh, intra-rater reliability for this. So if the same person does it each time uh, and is consistent and, and is experienced, uh, I have fairly good reliability data uh, from my cross-sectional area measurements from measurement to measurement. Um, so ICCs were fairly good, above 0.9. So here you can see that's your area that you're going to record, 37.77, and it's, you, there's a way to save it in the actual ultrasound device itself, but it's easier if you just write them down uh, and then go ahead and plug them into Excel later um, inst instead of uh, doing it that other way. Make sure again that you hit P1 to save that uh, recorded image. Uh, you definitely don't want to have to do those more times than you have to. And then we'll move on to our, our next cross-sectional image and then record, again record three images typically take the average of all three uh, is, is uh, one way of doing it. The other way to uh, uh, measure cross-sectional area uh, to analyze it would be to export these images and then analyze them in ImageJ software and ImageJ uh, is a little bit more flexible so we're able to uh, uh, we're going to be able to zoom in uh, to a particular portion of the image and get a you know, very uh, close-up view of the aponeurosis and uh, make sure that we're not including or uh, you know, adipose or anything like that uh, in the uh, analysis itself. So um, again, just another way of, of doing this analysis. You can also do the longitudinal images 
in the MSJ software as well. And you see many other uh, researchers use that uh, software to analyze their ultrasound images. And uh, we can talk about that next. We'll go over how to export the ultrasound images uh, to a flash drive so you can go ahead and analyze them on ImageJ. So now we're going to go over how to transfer data to USB. Make sure you plug the USB down here where it says serial, plug it in. And if you want to export images for a particular subject, go ahead, we'll use the same subject we've been using in previous videos. Go over here, click on the exam that you want. And then notice the images will come up for that exam. You can select all of the images. And then you go over here, save select images, USB. And you can go ahead and put in a folder name, you know, say, uh, for the date. You don't have to put the file name. If you hit save, it'll save all of those images to the USB drive in a JPEG format. So that's useful uh, because if you want to analyze these images with using ImageJ software, this is a way you can export them and go and uh, take them over to your laptop and analyze the images on ImageJ software. Something that's important to note if you're going to analyze the images in ImageJ software. So you need to make sure that for a given image, you have a way to calibrate uh, the image on ImageJ software. So it needs to know, the software needs to know uh, the number of pixels uh, in say a, a centimeter. Uh, so for example, what we can do is, we can go over here, we can, we can use this part of the screen, uh, even if we wanted to, and uh, measure off a centimeter on the screen. So we know that that is equal to one centimeter, we can save it. You can, you can do the same thing on, on the image itself. So if you wanted to go here and just, you know, save, make sure you save something so that way when you go into image J, it's gonna ask you to calibrate the image so you can go ahead and measure that distance. You know it's a centimeter and, and image J is gonna have the number of pixels in that centimeter and you can use that as the calibration. You'll need to do that for each of the images. So make sure you have that done. And then you can do it for the uh, cross-sectional image as well. You know, make sure you have some way of, of calibrating that uh, cross-sectional image. So there you go. Uh, and then, so you go ahead, make sure when you do this, again, if you're gonna, uh, you need, you're gonna need this, so you're gonna have to save this image with that measurement on it. So it will know what to do. All right. Great, that's how you transfer data to a flash drive.